So I'm going to take up the subject according to Baba's latest Avyakt Murli, which you all must have received, no? Baba used one word three times. Which word was that? Hmm? Parivartan, Parivartan, Parivartan. So transformation, transformation, transformation. Actually, that's our slogan. People ask, what is your aim and objective? And we say, the aim and objective is world transformation through self-transformation. In Hindi, the words are Sva Parivartan Dwara Vishva Parivartan. The world cannot be transformed unless the self is transformed, we say. I remember many years ago, someone came in the Raj Yoga camp, which I conduct in Madhuban, in Gansarovar, in Shantivan, for new people who like to learn meditation. So we have a three days intensive, especially for meditation, in the months of April, May, June, after the double foreigners have left. And sometimes it's nearly 1,500 people, 1,000 people in Shantivan. And if they come to Gansarovar, then we usually have it in the Harmony Hall, or if they are lesser ones, the people, then we have them in this hall too. And someone asked me a question, you talk about world transformation. How do you expect everyone to change, the whole world to change? It's such a huge world, thousands and hundred thousands and millions and billions of people in the world. You expect everyone to change? And I said, well, it's not that we expect everyone to change. We say that you just change yourself. That's all. Don't think of anyone else. Don't think how the world will change, how this will happen, how that will happen. No. You just change yourself and the world will change. One drop, it starts with a drop, it starts with the first step. And therefore if you change, it will enable your family to change and from your family it will enable your neighborhood to change and your neighborhood will lead to the society to change and then the country to change and the world to change. So you start with the self. But he wasn't satisfied and he kept on arguing that it's a very big challenge and I don't think anyone ever can, can you know, keep up to this challenge. No one has up to now and how do the Brahma Kumaris claim that they can change the world? So I tried my best and uh, then when he met Dadiji, he asked the same question. Actually, he asked the same question to everyone, <laughs> not just to me, but he met the seniors, whomever he met, the same question, same question. So ultimately, when he met Dadiji, he asked the same question to Dadiji. So Dadiji also tried to explain the same thing, that you change yourself, forget the world, just change yourself. And he says, I don't accept it. So then Daddy, Daddy then s said, okay, Baba will answer. Because usually when Dadiji meets new people, she gives them a gift. That's the diary, you know, the diary, spiritual diary. And uh, in that diary, on every page, there are two slogans. At the top as well as at the bottom. And in India, it's like a custom, you know. Open any page. That's... God's versions for you for that day. 
you know. In the Sikhs, there is this custom. Every day, when they read the Granth, the, script, the holy book, they just open any page. It's not that uh, it's fixed that, okay, I, I read up to here yesterday, now I continue after that. Now, if they have to read just for five minutes, they'll open any page and then just read maybe one stanza from that page. And then they will elaborate on that. So, Dadi told him, okay, open any page. And whatever comes at the top, that is God's answer to you. And to his surprise, he opened the page and there on top was written, was written self-transformation <laughs> will lead to world transformation. And he looked at Dadi, then he looked at that uh, slogan, again he looked at Dadi and Dadi is smiling at him. And he's smiling too. And she said, well, I didn't open the page. There are, it's a book of 200 pages and there are 400 slogans in this. Each slogan is different. Not one is like the other, you know. They're not alike. Each one is different. And uh, out of all the slogans or the sayings, you had to get this one. That means Baba has answered your question. Usually, you know, when we get blessing, we say, oh, this is what I wanted, this is what I want. You know, Dadi gives a blessing card and you really, you receive what you wanted. And so the same thing is, Baba gave him the same answer. And then he had, you know, he developed so much faith instantly that this is only God's work. It's not human work. And then from, he was actually... Um, editor of a very big newspaper, a VIP. And uh, when he went back, he wrote in his editorial, because every day he writes an editorial, that I went to the Brahma Kumaris and I felt the magic there. Everyone is, um, is magic. The place is magic, the people are magic, and whatever they give, even that is magic, you know, because <laughs> of the diary. And he wrote his experience in the editorial. He's very cooperative, he comes to the center of it. And whenever anything, any news is given to him, he always uh, publishes it. So, and he comes to Madhuban also quite often, and he goes to the center also often. So, this is Baba's magic. And therefore, if some people question, oh, how will the world change? The answer is just simple. Just change yourself. And this is what Baba said the other day. That your face, your behavior, and your words, your speech, that will do the magic. Because then they won't just appreciate you, they won't just admire you. I mean, that they will. But then it will reveal the Father. Because, as Baba said, they will question, who has made you like that? Hmm? It's, it's not that, oh, you are great. But then, who is the one who has made you great? So Baba will be revealed. And in contrast to that, Baba said, just you know, giving a lecture is only like shooting an arrow. Because I remember once Baba gave me a blessing in which Baba said that uh, uh, whenever you teach or speak or give lectures, you say it from your heart, Baba gave me this blessing. And because you say it from your heart, it touches the hearts. And when it touches the hearts, it brings an instant transformation. That's the blessing Baba gave me once. And then Baba gave a contrast that those who speak from their head, well, that touches the heads. But then it goes in from one year and then maybe comes out <laughs> from the other year. But then those who speak from the heart touch others' hearts. And when others' hearts are touched, then they change instantly. And therefore, you don't. You should aim for s touching the hearts of people, not the heads of people. That means not just 
it should be an intellectual talk too much intellectual talk is not a is not actually our aim in the world they do it intellectual talk i know what big big words they use such you know things they speak maybe half of the people don't understand what they are saying <laughs> sometimes it happens when this when they speak but then it should be it can be simple very simple but it should touch the hearts and that will bring about a transformation like see baba's murlis are so simple i mean it's not something very difficult to understand at all even a new person can understand it very easily simple point like consciousness of the i that's what i have to change my idea my plans as jenti ben was saying the other day in the class at shanti van i have to change that and how will that change come it has it will come from within nobody else can change me however much someone tries to tell me to change i will never be able to change until i myself have decided that yes i will change until then what happens is we try to give excuses but he should change first he should uh, understand first he should uh, try to do it first i will but why doesn't he do it uh, sometimes we say but why am i being told all the time why isn't that person told i don't mind changing but even he should be told to change i'm not the only one responsible i remember in one murli baba it said am i the only one who has to die i do i have to die all the time and baba said yes you have to <laughs> i remember that murli so it is definitely dying is it not where you have to just surrender you have to become humble you have to say yes actually in that there is great benefit great benefit why there is great benefit first of all some karmic account of the past is finished it's a big benefit secondly it gives me an uh, inner strength you know when i have decided okay i will change i have no expectations in others it gives me an inner strength and thirdly my will power because the strength comes the will power will increase actually it has to come from inside only it won't come from outside that is why we say the definition of education what's the meaning of education educer it comes from that word it means something which is drawn out from within that's what they say literally means to draw out from inside that is the meaning of education so baba says unless i have decided i will never be able to change and therefore that will from inside is needed and then secondly as we talk about in management course the focus focus means what's my aim i remember once someone i think it was tadi who gave a class or i don't know who but one point touched my heart instantly because there was a big discussion you know and uh, we were some sisters sitting together there was a big problem and uh, it had to be solved anyway someone was saying no this one did someone did said that one did you know so tari sat with us and tari said let me know tell me when you came to baba at the beginning what was the aim why did you come to this organization why did you come i mean what were you looking for so someone said we were looking for peace someone said we were looking for god someone said that uh, we wanted to learn yoga you know that was everyone gave a different answer why did we come to this organization so when we came 
the aim was so different to experience peace to experience god to experience um, yoga you know and why have we drifted away from that aim if we uh, start doing a little bit of argument and you know start creating more problems or become problematic instead of finding a solution we are creating more problems that means we have drifted away from our original aim why we came to this organization we not only came because of that aim but then we continued and when we continued why did we forget that aim that's our aim that's our focus to experience true peace of mind to to become a yogi so if that's our aim how we drifted away from our aim if we are doing anything else than that that means we have drifted away from our aim so let us go back to our origin that's why baba mentioned about the fortune of our birth in the murli who has given us the spiritual birth and therefore i have to keep in my mind that i have to change that's why there's a slogan in hindi you know jo ote so arjun the one who does it first is the real arjuna and he gets the marks because what is more important is our our marks for the end the last paper the final test paper in which we have to get full marks but then it's not that paper which will be the the only paper it will depend on all the what we have done throughout our life that will be added in our last test or the last uh, marks marks at the end so these are like the stepping stones and therefore as baba often says that we have to think maybe this is my last moment if i'm having a waste thought if i'm having an impure thought if i'm doing anything against shrimat whatever and if that would be my last moment my last breath and i leave the body supposing anything can happen at any time that's why baba says everything will happen all of a sudden so if it happens then what will i attain where will i reach if i leave my body at this time what will my thoughts be at that time so let every moment be your last moment and secondly baba has given us such a elevated aim and objective the status is so high just imagine baba was saying in the murli that the highest status could be of a sovereign there couldn't be any other higher status than that you know recently i don't know if you have heard the news but uh, a few days back saddam hussein you know the the former ruler of iraq he he was found he was captured and uh, he is now under custody of the americans and you know where he was hiding in a little hole little little hole they showed that hole where he was hiding and it came in big words from the palaces of switzerland to a small hole you know he must have once upon a time lived in palaces he used to live in big palaces once he lived in a palace of switzerland also and where he had reached into a small hole that's the place where he was hiding and they found him well that's what they say you never know <laughs> but so 
and now they are going to do trial upon him and the president of america says that i think i suggest that he should be given a uh, life sentence that means death sentence or he should be given death sentence but there's a very big question mark because that death sentence has been eliminated from from the laws of america of many european countries so, so now again a very big question so what i'm trying to say is that he's paying off his karmas definitely it's not for no reason and therefore baba says that whatever i do i will have to reap anyway and therefore why not i transform because my future status is high that i have to keep in mind so if i have to attain there i must start from myself i was you know just before coming here someone gave me a little story book to read for children and a very interesting story i said i'll share that story <laughs> with the double foreigners the story was about a baby horse the baby the ho- the baby the horse is just born and you know well human children when they are born they don't jump they don't run but horses they start running jumping you know you right from birth all these animals so that baby horse was born but it's afraid to jump it's afraid to run and the mother is telling the baby horse run run see jump see your other the other babies they were born uh, when you as the time you were born and see they are jumping and you are not but it's afraid because he thinks that he might fall you know that fear is that he might fall that's the thought in the in the baby horse and then the mother is telling him again and again see they are jumping run you also jump and he's still afraid but then one day he says okay i will jump and he jumps you know and he jumps so he's so happy oh i can jump then he begins to jump but then one day he falls <laughs> that uh, it that baby horse falls and then he doesn't want to jump again you know that's a story for children but it has such a deep meaning it doesn't want to jump again because afraid of falling it jumped it was happy but then it fell again it fell and therefore it doesn't want to jump again and then it so happens the mother took the baby horse it's walking took the baby horse to the river and uh, then she is seeing the baby is seeing that other little babies horse baby horses they are jumping and they have crossed the river and on the other side of the river there are strawberries you know and they have jumped and uh, they are same age but then they have jumped they are very brave and they and they eating the strawberries but this baby horse is still on the uh, at the side of the river it is not ready to jump and the mother is saying see if you want to get those strawberries then you'll have to do i can't pick you up <laughs> i can't pick you up and therefore you have to if you want those strawberries and then the, the because the baby horse is saying mommy i want those strawberries i want those strawberries but then the mother said how can i get you the strawberries you have to do it yourself and then says, yes i will and then it jumps and it is able to reach and it gets the strawberries <laughs> that's the story so however much someone may try to help you but ultimately you have to do it yourself you know that's what we say you can take the horse to the water but you can't make it drink it has to drink itself you know little children if they don't want to eat and even the mother puts the food in the mouth they'll, they'll just spit it out because they don't want to eat so however much the mother may want the child to eat but if he doesn't want it he will not eat so if i have to eat 
I, if I should eat, I should try it myself. And therefore, however much dadis tell us, however much Baba tells us, still we are sometimes lenient, sometimes uh, not really paying attention, sometimes ignoring. And therefore, Baba says, the transformation of the world is not happening. And this is why, you know, Dadi Janki was telling the other day in the class in Shantivan, she said, Dadi Ji has been emphasizing on do service of hundred thousands, go to the villages, do this service, do that service. And I will say, no, forget service. <laughs> Think of transformation, transformation. Such a big contrast. But then, it's true, both go together. If I just sit down and say, okay, I'm not going to do any service until I have transformed myself completely, even that won't work. Will it work? Huh? Will it work? <laughs> you'll, never do, you'll, you'll neither do service nor you will be able to transform yourself. And this is why Baba says balance. And that's the beauty of the dadis. One dadi will say one thing, but then in balance to that dadi, the other dadi will say, uh, will say the other thing, which may seem a contrast, but actually they are both needed. You can't do with one. That's why Baba says you have to keep a balance. Remembrance and service. You cannot do just service without remembrance and you cannot just sit in remembrance without doing service. You will never be successful in either. They go together. And therefore, uh, today's blessing was karma yoga. Karma and yoga. We cannot do just yoga. We cannot do just karma. Both have to go together. But then some people, when they say karma yoga, they define it in a different way. They say work is worship. That's how they define karma yoga. Work is worship. That means all the attention is towards the work only. That's my yoga. Because yoga means attention, yoga means love, yoga means remembrance, whatever. But then it is with the work, karma yoga. And Baba says, that's not the right meaning of karma yoga. Because if the yoga is just with the work, then what will happen? What will happen? Naturally, it's not just work with the work, it's with the success of that work. Actually, that's what it really means. I want this work to be successful, I want to succeed, and therefore I will pay all my attention to get that work successful. Okay, if, it, if I do get success in that work, then what will happen? Hmm? the ego will come. Oh, see, I did it. I could do it. I have done it. I am right. Therefore, I got success. The ego will appear. But supposing you don't get success, because it's not necessary that always you get success. You study for an examination and you studied and studied so much, so much, and afterwards you fail, supposing. It's not that uh, sometimes whatever we have studied doesn't come in the exam. <laughs> you know, those, paper, those questions don't come. We have studied something different and something different comes in the examination paper. And we don't succeed. Then we get disheartened. Oh, I did so much, I did so much. I didn't get success. I worked so hard, I worked so hard and didn't get success. So disheartenment comes. So that's not karma yoga, to be in yoga with the karma. No. Karma yoga means hands are doing the karma, but yoga is with God. I'm studying, 
but in the remembrance of Baba. Now again, this is an interesting balance. So physically I'm doing, may even maybe intellectually I'm studying, but then the aim is, the thought is, I'm doing it for Baba. So Baba is remembered in that too. You have your lucky job, you're working, but then you know that it's for Baba. And the result is that you're physically you are doing ordinary actions, but your stage is very high. You are in remembrance of Baba. And now, with that remembrance, you, if you get success, the ego doesn't come. Because you say, no, the whole share goes to Baba. I was only an instrument. It's Baba who did it. It's Baba's magic, not me. I just did in Baba's remembrance. And therefore the ego doesn't come. And if the other way around, if you don't get success, then also you're not disheartened. Why should you be disheartened? So what in life so many things happen? You can't expect um, success to be there always, not necessary. And even if there isn't success, at least you have learned so many lessons, you have got so much experience through that. You have not lost anything. Nothing is ever lost in this world. There's always a gain, always a gain. And therefore, why should I be disheartened? Doesn't matter. Maybe it was destined that way. It was, ex it was to happen that way. Anyway, Baba is with me, so that's what is more important. You know? I don't care for anything else. I don't want to give up my Baba or give up my peace. Not at the cost of my peace I want to get anything else. No, not at all. My peace is more important for me. My inner happiness is more important to me. My values are more important to me. You know, that's why the saying goes, if wealth is lost, nothing is lost. If health is lost, something is lost. But if character is lost, values are lost, everything is lost. Why? Because those values belong to the soul. Wealth belongs to nature, to matter. That can come back any time. Health belongs to the body. Though something is lost compared to wealth, if it's lost, then nothing is lost. If health is lost, something is lost. Why? Because health doesn't come back so quickly. It doesn't come back. Once you lose health, it doesn't come back is instantly. You know, they say in the Lokik world that when you lose health, supposing a problem as if some flu or any disease, any sickness comes, it comes instantly. You don't even realize it. All of a sudden cold. All of a sudden. I mean, you were just fine five minutes ago. All of a sudden it came. So it comes at the speed of, of, a, of a bird, that's a saying. But it goes at the speed of an ant. <laughs> when it comes, you get it in instantly, a cold. But it takes at least three days for the cold to go. It doesn't go away immediately. And, and sometimes they say, if you take medicine for cold, it will take, uh, uh, how many, three days is how many hours? 24, 48, 58, 72 hours. So if you take medicine, it will go in 72 hours. And if you don't take medicine, it will go in three days. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Means it doesn't matter whether you take medicine or don't take medicine because that virus lasts for three days. It finishes. So just take the precautions that it doesn't increase but there's no need for any medicine. So, but it takes three days, but it came instantly. It didn't take time. It didn't tell you that I'm going to come tomorrow. <laughs> so therefore, if wealth is lost, nothing is lost, because you can get 10 times more than what you lost later on, doesn't matter. They compare wealth to the dust, you know, of the atmosphere. 
you like if you go to calcutta it's a thi most thickly polluted city of the world i should say calcutta very very polluted i remember when we went a few years ago morning we would come out with very clean clothes within 2 hours everything so dirty everything cuz too much traffic too many people too many industries too much even delhi was like that before but now it has changed because of the 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 uh, cng gas which they have introduced in buses and uh, and rickshaws and others but calcutta is very bad in this sense so they say it's like the 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 dust of the atmo in the atmosphere wealth is like that if it goes it will come back because you wash your hands and again after one hour the hands are dirty <laughs> everything is dirty so it comes back it's there so wealth is never lost it comes back but if health is lost it doesn't come back so quickly but if character is lost it doesn't come back at all it's like a red mark on your character certificate which cannot be erased at least not for that birth not for that life because anybody will say oh is that one that one oh he he is the one she is the one it's remembered so therefore baba says why should we do that because it becomes a lifelong thing and sometimes we write you know we have a picture if character lost everything lost and then we add a sentence not for one birth but for many births together and you know we give an example there for the lokik people that supposing someone is taking bribe or someone is drinking and uh, he stabs someone and then he is put into prison all the bad habits people have and in the prison he dies supposing in a drunk state in the depressed state and he's he has been fighting in the prison and all that his his character isn't good now supposing he dies where will his soul go where will his soul go it will be reborn yes but in which house in which home in that home where everyone is a drunkard when where everyone's character is bad i mean no one is really there to uplift that soul again unless he has some good karma you know in in that uh, in his soul in any some birth where and the result is he comes across a person who really helps him to change that one become like a catalyst for him to enable him to change otherwise it will bring a deg degradation in him so if character lost lost not just for one birth but for many births together money lost wealth lost nothing lost health lost something lost so baba says actually it's the values which they belong to the soul and if they are lost that means it's like the soul is dead when the soul is as good as dead then where is the upliftment and therefore baba says even if you have to die it doesn't matter but you should not lose your happiness why does baba say that hmm? your happiness should not be lost your peace should not be lost your values are more important than anything else in the world so this is what baba says transformation we have to bring about transformation otherwise we have to pay off our karmas anyway any at any time in the cycle and as brahmins the punishment is hundredfold you know even in the law if a small child commits some uh, error or something some mistake his punishment will not be that much as much as if someone senior someone elderly someone uh, 
intelligent, sensible, he commits an, a mistake. You know, in the in the in law, it is like that. I remember once I was in Mauritius, and uh, there was a very big accident in the sense that someone was drunk, and he was driving a truck, and uh, the little children were just passing the street, passing the road. Sorry, and they they just come out from school, and they were they were crossing the road. And this man, he was in that drunk state and he just went above them. And about 50 children died on the spot. They were crossing the road and he just and he just went through and they died. And there was a big thing in the newspapers that 50 children, I don't know, 50 or 20, 30, they were. And, uh, and the question was that what, what uh, punishment should be given to him? But then it came again in the newspaper that his lawyer said that he was insane. He was insane. So a big question mark, an insane person cannot be given a punishment. He is sent to a lunatic asylum or to a hospital, you know, but not in a prison. Maybe later on the trial is there when he becomes all right. That's, fine. That's another thing. But not at that moment. So Baba says that before we came into Gyan, well, if we did something wrong, the punishment was not that much. But then after they coming to Baba, and if we do something against the Mariyatas, against the disciplines, the punishment is hundredfold. But then many tell, oh, is Baba trying to frighten us? Baba is not frightening us. But Baba is warning us, definitely. He is making us become cautious. So that later on we don't say, oh, Baba, you didn't tell me. That's why Baba was saying in the Murli, children, transformation, transformation, transformation. I remember in every Murli, there is one word which Baba emphasizes on the most. If you go through all the murlis, you will come across. In each murli is a different word. And if we really pay attention to that, I'm sure transformation will come about easily. <laughs>